Let's take a look at SOLIDWORKS CAM 2018. So before we get going, um, SOLIDWORKS CAM is available in two packages. We have SOLIDWORKS CAM Standard, which ships with all seats of SOLIDWORKS on subscription, and we have SOLIDWORKS CAM Professional, which is a separate purchase product. Everything that we see here will be in SOLIDWORKS CAM Standard. We have the hood hinge assembly on the screen at the moment, and if I just open up this part here, we'll take a look at how we, we go how we would go about machining this part. So SOLIDWORKS CAM is an add-in, and as such, it will sit along the top of the uh, command manager like so. It also embeds itself into the feature tree. So we have the SOLIDWORKS CAM feature tree, the CAM operation tree, and the CAM tools tree. We start off in the CAM feature tree, and we start by defining what machine we want to use. So within here, we can pick our machine and we get some key information about the machine. We then go to our tool crib. So this is what we load our machine up with. These are the tools that we use. So within here, we can add tools, we can edit the tools that are there, we can remove tools from our tool crib. And once we have our tool crib set, we can save that away for reuse later on. And then we have a post processor tab. So the aim here is to, to generate some code for a machine here. We can choose our post post processor from the list. So I'll just choose this FANUC and then press OK. We then go to the stock manager. So the blue that you see on the screen at the moment is the block that I'm going to machine my part from. We can define the material for that and that will determine the cutting speeds and various other bits and pieces. And then we can choose what the stock type is. So it's using bounding box at the moment. Now bounding box fits a cuboid around your model and then you can add additional material to that with the bounding box offset tools here. If you want your um, stock to be a particular shape or size, you can always use a sketch to define the bounding box size or you can use an STL file or a part file. These options are useful if you're machining from a cast in. So the cast part, which is saved away as a separate file or a separate configuration, could be used as your stock. Now, next up, we need to create some operations to machine this part. Now, this can be a very manual process or it can be a very automated process. We'll go and have a look at the automated process. So I just click on Extract Machinable Features and SOLIDWORKS CAM is analyzing the model, looking for holes, pockets, and various other bits and pieces. So here you can see it's recognized a number of open pockets and a number of uh, irregular pockets, or brown pockets, and holes. And then based on our database, it chooses a machining strategy to machine those pockets uh, and features out. So typically here we're starting with a roughing cut and then finishing with the contour mill. Once we're happy with that we can generate a toolpath and then from there we can simulate that toolpath. So if I click on simulate toolpath I've got this set at full speed. If we just play this through you'll see that it machines or it's giving us a uh, video of how it's going to machine that part and during this process we can check for uh, various collisions with the tool against the model and so on. We also have this show difference tool within the display options and anything that's green there, um, there is no difference between the machine part and the original model and anything that's blue still needs to be removed. So we can see we've still got to remove this, this top face. It didn't automatically select a, a strategy to remove that for us. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Um, I'll add in a new um, two and a half axis feature. It's going to be uh, an open pocket and we'll just select the face. Click on end condition and we can then pick the strategy to machine that. So we can go for a rough and a finish or if there's very little material to move there. We could just do a finish there, for example, uh, but we'll stick with roughing and then a finishing cut. And we can see key information about that operation on the right-hand side. We then choose our 
end condition so we can build in intelligence to this such if the model changes so I'll say up to stock there and then finally I just need to determine where the islands are so we click on auto detect and it just picks up on the three bosses that are extending above that face from there we generate our operation plan so it's going to rough cut it and then contour mill it and then from there we can generate our toolpath if we go back into simulate toolpath here and just hit play you can see that's now looking pretty good now what we have in our operation tree is a very inefficient uh, program at the moment. We're doing a roughing cut, followed by a contour, finish, then another roughing cut, then a finish, and so on and so forth. What we'd ideally like to do is do all our roughing cuts first, then all our finishing cuts, and so on and so forth. So we can reorder this manually if we want to by dragging and dropping these items up the tree, or there are various sort operations available to us. So I'm just gonna go in here and click sort operations and we'll sort by tool size. Press OK and you can see it's sorting by the tools smallest, uh, largest to smallest. Well, we can also group these operations together. So I'm just gonna multi-select these items here and from there we can combine them into a single operation if we want to. Again, we can speed up this combining by clicking combine operations and we can say I want all countersinks and contour mills that are using the same size tooling to be grouped together into a single operation. That's looking pretty good. Moving back to the main assembly, we'll take a look at this item which has a large amount of PMI associated to it. Now we can make use of this PMI inside SolidWorks CAM using something called tolerance based machining. So if I toggle that on, You'll see here the various features that are available for us to machine. And, and if we pick a hole, you'll see it'll choose a machining strategy based on the, the tolerance that's been applied to it. So if we have a really tight tolerance, it's gonna bore the hole. Whereas if we have a mid-range tolerance, it will ream it. And then finally, if we have quite a large tolerance, it will drill it. So let's just run that tool. And you'll see here that it's going to, to drill that hole based on the tolerance that's been applied to it. So if I was to go in here and just modify the tolerance, so we'll go for a fit tolerance. F7, so you can see the tolerance is much tighter now. And we run that tool again. you'll see that it chooses a reaming strategy to machine that hole rather than a drilling strategy. So I think that's really powerful that we can start to take some of that PMI data that we've created and we can use that to determine our machining strategies. Okay, so switching back to the PowerPoint, SolidWorks CAM is available to all SolidWorks users on subscription. It's not a new technology, it's powered by CAMWorks who are a golf partner of SolidWorks. You can do part machining and CAM standard as well as two and a half axis milling, two axis turning and tool path simulation. You can also use tolerance based machining to choose your strategy uh, based on the, the tolerance information of the model. There is much more functionality available in CAM Professional. Our next video is on SolidWorks inspection. Mm -hmm.